Hey, I just sense that God wants to ask a question of your heart today. Have you ever been misunderstood, misrepresented and misplaced? If that is the case, God wants you to know the place of brokenness that those experiences have brought you to and they bring you to will ultimately be your openness to the presence, to the power and to the purposes of God being trusted, entrusted and Christ being fully formed in you. God does not want his children at this time deformed, but he longs for us to fully represent the beauty of Jesus. We have been made in his image that Christ's character, God is all about our character being fully formed in us so that he can trust us and he can entrust us with all of his purposes and his power and his provisions in our lives, that we're not going to be spoilt little children that use them wrongfully and take it for ourselves, but we will always lay all of the glory at the feet of Jesus. Our beautiful saviour, our Jesus, he knew all three in his life. He knew what it meant to be misunderstood. He knew what it meant to be misrepresented and to be misplaced. We see in Jesus the times people expected, they had a, a wrong expectation of him. They misunderstood who he was and what he had come to accomplish and what he'd come to do and fulfil for his father and for each and every one of us on the earth. They wanted him to come and save them from the tyranny of the Romans. They looked to the temporal, but God through Jesus' obedience, Jesus was all about the eternal and Jesus was misunderstood. They didn't understand that he had come to fulfil God's perfect plan. He'd come in humility, son of God, to be son of man who would suffer. They didn't understand that he had come to save us eternally. They didn't understand Jesus. They didn't understand his surrender to the Father and to the cross. We see when he was misrepresented before going to the cross, when people wrongly lied about him, misrepresented him, it said he didn't open his mouth. He was fully surrendered, just as he saw the Father do and all he heard the Father say, that's all he wanted to relay. That was all he was about, was pleasing his father. May the same be said of us too. And then we see when Jesus was misplaced. Can you imagine what the angels must have thought and how they felt when they looked in horror at Jesus, the very darling of heaven, the son of God himself, the one who created man, having nails hammered, into his hands by the very man that he had created, son of God, darling of heaven, and then raised up, the one who was raised up, the highest in heaven, worshipped and adored, being raised up on a cruel cross with a crown of thorns, the king of heaven mockingly placed on his head. The angels, how they must have looked in awe and thought, how misplaced is Jesus, the darling, the son of God, to be on a cross, but his misplacement was our replacement back into the hands, into the plans and purposes that God originally had for us, that we would be reconnected to our King, our God, our Father, and to his kingdom. The times when you feel misunderstood, misrepresented, just like Jesus, and misplaced. May we surrender by his grace into the hands of God. May Christ's character be fully formed in us so we may be lives fully surrendered and that can be trusted with the power, with the purposes of God to be released through us in this, our generation. I don't know about you, but I'm not about position. I am just about the purposes of God being fulfilled through my life and in my generation. 
and that comes with a surrendered life. Will you answer heaven's call today and surrender all to our Father? And ask that Christ's character would be fully formed in each and every one of us. In Genesis 26, we read an incredible, and I want to declare this prophetically today, Isaac was so successful. We see that God blessed him, he prospered him, everything he did and everything he touched turned to gold. He was living the dream, just like many of us perhaps, and then disaster struck. We see just like lockdown, suddenly there's a change circumstances shift and at the end of in fact just let me read in verse chapter 26 of Genesis and verse 16 we find after all that success Abimelech ordered Isaac to leave the country go somewhere else he said for you have become too powerful for us I just sense the Lord wants to say today it's not your weakness that the enemy is scared of, but he is scared of the powerful purposes that God has for your life. The enemy, Abimelech of Isaac, was jealous of his power and of him becoming too powerful. The enemy and those around you, when you sometimes feel like the rug's been pulled from beneath you, when you feel misunderstood and misrepresented, it could well be because people are, and the enemy of your soul is envious of the powerful purposes of God that they recognise within your life. Don't allow anyone to put you down, to pull you back from the purposes and from the plans and from the truth of God's word. You have powerful purposes placed within your life today in Jesus name. Now we see that Isaac, he left that place, he was kicked out. Maybe you have left a place of comfort, you've left due to lockdown, you're in a very different position right now, God's setting you up for a win. Isaac, it says in Genesis 26, and you can read about it from verse 20 onwards, that they arrived at a place called Gerar, Isaac and all his men, and they came to a spring of water. Isaac named the well Essek, because as he started to dig out that well, a load of herdsmen gathered around. They began to argue with him. That place means argument. Isaac's men in verse 21 then dug another well, but again there was a dispute over it, so Isaac named it Sitna, which means hostility. After Abandoning that one, Isaac moved on and he dug another well. This time, there was no dispute over it. So Isaac named the place Rehoboth, which means open space. For he said, at last the Lord has created enough space for us to prosper in the land. Then one night the Lord appeared to him and he said, he arrived at a place called Beersheba. And the Lord said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. He said, do not be afraid for I am with you. I will bless you. I will multiply your descendants and they will become a great nation. I want to declare to your life today, prophetically, according to the authority and to the word of the Lord. Many of you have found during lockdown and during this season in your life, you've come to a place called Essek. It's been a place of contention. That word Essek, it means argument, contention. It means to be pressed, hard pressed. Maybe you felt like that financially and in so many areas of your life. You felt that contention. Maybe it's been as it also means quarrelling and to strive with. Maybe your home has become a place of quarrelling. Maybe relationally in your work or in your situations, you have known the, those arguments, that unsettlement. The Lord wants to bring, and I'm declaring his peace to homes and to hearts today. I am praying today that the Lord is going to cause that place to turn into his place of unity, his restoration to relationships, and it's going to be a place of peace. Where there is unity, God will command his blessing. On your life. Secondly, we see that Isaac 
came to a well and he named it Sitna. Well means opposition and accusation. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, says the Lord, but every tongue that rises against you, you shall condemn. Notice, Jesus has already done it all and won it all for you at the cross. You, God has given you the authority as you arise in the power of his word. You can condemn, you can come against every enemy that comes against you in Jesus' name. And thirdly, we see that Isaac came to a well called Rehoboth. This is where God is bringing you to. There are no lockdowns for the children of God. There is only an open heaven. I keep on constantly declaring that. There are no isolation places for the children of God because as we see, as God promised Isaac, he, God himself, was with Isaac and God himself is with you to bless you, to multiply you and your family. God has got you and you have got this. And we see that Isaac was at that place, Rehoboth, where that well was, that place of enlargement. God made room. God is opening wide. All the times that you have felt misunderstood, misrepresented and misplaced, God has been preparing you and God has been bringing you to a place where he can trust you. Get this, because God had brought Isaac and he named the city here. He named the place where Rehoboth was, Beersheba. And God gave him a city. God is setting you up with blessing, with prosperity, with kingdom influence for his purpose. As you lean into him, you will win all that heaven has for you in this season. Beersheba means, are you ready to receive this prophetically for your life today? This is where God is bringing you to and the place he is preparing you for. Beersheba means well of the oath. The Lord said to me, God is bringing his children to a place of promise. And secondly, Beersheba means the number seven. I looked up what the number seven means to refresh my memory Hebraically in the Hebrew. And seven means a place of God's perfection. So God says to you today, all that you have been through has been setting you up and has been preparing you for the place that you are now in, to that place of the fulfilment of God's promises for your life and that place of God's perfection that's represented in the number seven. That number seven it also means rest. It means new beginnings. Get ready for new beginnings in your life. In Jesus' name, receive that from the word of the Lord right now. Get ready for wholeness. Get ready for completeness. That's what seven means Hebraically. It means being ripe. God has been preparing you so that now he can trust you. You are ready. You have been prepared for his. This has been preparation for his prosperity in every area of your life. Divine order where there has been disorder. God is bringing his order into your chaos. God is bringing stability where there has been instability. And finally, that number seven means holiness to be wholly set apart for God's purposes, to please him. Holiness means fully functional. We can only be fully functional through the power of God's word, through Jesus returning to him, through living in the power of the Holy Spirit. How beautiful is that God has brought you and I to a place. This is time the fulfilment of his promises for your life, for my life, is at hand. The restoration of all things is at hand, says the Lord. And he has brought us to a place of his perfection being outworked and manifest in our lives. That place of resting in the finished work of Jesus. Can I pray for you today? Father, we thank you for your word. We receive your word today. Lord, for all the times we have been misunderstood, misrepresented and misplaced. I thank you, Lord, that's been preparation to bring us to this place today. Lord, we are ready. Have your way. Lord, we receive and open our hearts to your presence, to your power, to your perfection now being outworked in our lives. We thank you for that place of perfection and for that place, Father, that you have brought us to. 
of your fulfillment of every promise for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.